So from one, I was going to say an old force of nature, one force of nature who's been with us for a dozen years. Um, uh, I'm now going to introduce you to a new force of nature, uh, Katina Michael, who's joined uh, the School for the Future of Innovation and Society, which is kind of the mothership uh, to um, CSPO out, in, out at Arizona State University. And um, Katina, we've simply asked to, to uh, present to us, because it's going to be a surprise to us too, as well as you, um, a vision uh, for where um, inquiry, practice, uh, and engagement around issues of science, technology, innovation, and the future uh, ought to be going, and what we're going to try to be doing at the School for the Future of Innovation Society um, in the coming years. Now, I don't know where Katina is. Um, there you are. So <laughs> let me just say, um, uh, when she burst onto our scene from the University of Wollongong in Australia, we just said, we need her here. Um, and it was a long, complicated process that included significant dislocation for your family and yourself. You've been unbelievably generous spirited in it and have brought a new energy to our group in Arizona. Um, so uh, let me just turn it over to you. Thank you very much, Dan Sarowitz. This is a, a moment of deja vu, I think. I grew up in Tempe, New South Wales, in Australia, and found myself in Tempe, Arizona. For 24 years, my husband would sing to me, by the time I get to Phoenix, she'll be rising. So here's my destiny. And I took it. Because I believe in the people here. I believe in the voices such as Lee Goodkin, who are like those magical characters you read in novels. When you're a young kid, they exist. So for most of the CISPO gang, the motto, I think, is I believe. And when there are two or three people that believe, things can happen. And often we think we are alone in our plight in our organizations, that nobody will listen to my perspective, that to be different is really not cool. It slows things down. To try things and fail is bad when actually it's great. When we can learn from our mistakes and do better the next time, instead of saying, cover them up, they'll never know, and keep going. So two years ago, I was invited to dip my toe in Tempe, Arizona. And little did I know I was sucked in by the matrix and a two by two matrix, which I think for most of us as practitioners know that two by two doesn't work anymore. It's at least X, Y, and Z, a three dimensional XL problem usually as we face day to day and as most of us are discovering, oh my gosh, it's multi-dimensional. It's X, Y, Z, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, and then Z, Z. And maybe even Z, Z, Z. And how do we build these models that have so many unknown variables? And how do we make those models work and decrease the error rate? which is always what keeps us up at night. And then we realize two by two ain't bad. Yeah. So it does take courage. And in fact, true stories mean that you're speaking truth. And I haven't found the truth everywhere. I look for truth all the time, especially in organizations when it's so much easier to lie through your teeth and just nod your head. How many of us <clears throat> have witnessed corruption before us? How many of us have witnessed people making decisions based on commissions? How many of us have witnessed back of the envelope designs that end up being implemented and then the customer says, how come this doesn't work? speed. Life has become 
a series of flashes. We wake up, the phone flashes at us. Your smartphone, it's flashing all the time. See that little blue dot? And then we turn on the lights, it's another flash. And we get in our car, it's another flash. And we get to work, it's another swipe of the flash card. And we get to our computer, it's another flash. And we open our inbox, it's another flash. And we listen to the voicemails, it's another flash. And we're looking for those bits of light emanating from flashes. And some of us don't even know what it feels like to burn in heat in the Arizona desert because we live our life through flashes and through air-conditioned units. We go from our house that has air conditioning to the car that has air conditioning to the office that has air conditioning and back again to our beautiful apartments and our six-figure salaries. But when I came to Arizona with my children, leaving half the family behind, I realized I don't have a car. I don't have my earphones plugged into my ears and I don't walk around with the internet right before my eyes. And what happens is you see the problems for what they are. You meet the homeless people on the street who are there each day in the morning, in the afternoon, and when you're going back home at night time. And in the morning, the next day, they're there again. And you think, how come I didn't see this before in Australia? There are homeless people in Australia as well. There are homeless people in Wollongong. But what is it about our comforts and the flashes? It's that time-space collapse. We've become blind, we've become deaf, we've become heartless, we've become thinking, it's impossible, we can't change. We've lost our childhood belief in change. In change, all change is local change. Then it has a ripple effect through the globe. When my son fell ill, the first day we came to visit Arizona together, he was only eight, just turned eight. He was sick on the side of the footpath, uncontrollably, and couldn't stop, and I had no car. My phone was an Aussie phone. I couldn't call anyone. I told my daughter, Rashim, who's 10, go into the Starbucks and get some water. Jeremy was lying on the floor, like an angel who appeared. Who came to help me first? A homeless person in a wheelchair who said to me, Miss, can I help you? And offered me a bunch of Starbucks napkins. How ironic. I was looking around to see where is my daughter? Is there a multiple entrance? Has anything happened to her? It took 15 minutes for her to come out with three quarters of a cup of water. It was free though. While the man was looking on and saying, don't worry, I will tell so-and-so when he cleans the streets to wipe up the vomit. And I said, thank you. He goes, too much ice cream? I said, no, he's just having one of his molars come out. The second day, a man watches me for 60 minutes in the heat with my two kids at the corner of the place I was staying at. Miss, are you okay? I said, yes. We're waiting for a taxi and he nods and walks off i have never seen someone with bluer more crystal like eyes i felt comforted by his question are you okay the third time i'm going down the street three weeks later to take some money out at the bank because finally i had a bank account and this man says to me because you could probably see the stress on my face are you happy my e are you happy I said, yes, are you? He said, every single day of my life. The homeless people. How do we break out of that series of flashes? How do we wake up? My hope is that you leave today with hope. You leave today dipping your toe into CISPO, dipping your toe into the school of the future of innovation in society. And that we suck you into that two boat, two matrix and that you stay with us forever and you become our partners in crime for good, in tech for good, in future for good, 
in the future for the alleviation of all of these problems we see in society if we choose to get out of the series of flashes. So we need you. We need you to give guest lectures. We need you to tell what, us what your wicked problems are. We need you to give um, our students places for internships so they can try those things you've never been sort of able to try through resource constraints or through not knowing the new techniques to help us keep disrupting in healthy ways because it is our future, it's our collective future, it's your children, it's my children, it's our future, it's our planet. And I want you to continue in earnest to look every day in the morning in the mirror and say, am I real? Am I getting more real? Um, am I leading by authentic means? Am I being honest with myself? Am I passing down the right stories? And I want you to introduce us to other stakeholders because only when we interact, there is a community. Otherwise, it's not even bi-directional, it's one way. So government agencies, NGOs, other academics, other industry partners, and most and most and most important citizens. We forget that we are citizens. We have a life world as a citizen. Many of us have problems at home, children who are addicted to technology children who are illiterate and yet have access to every bit of information that has ever come into this world through the internet. Mental illness, single parent families that are struggling, people who are struggling that you know to pay their energy bills, people who have no transportation to get to health appointments, people who can't speak English. And yes, I visited the Title I school my, my children attend in Tempe, Arizona. 15% of those children pass their district examination. 15, one, five. What is our future in the States? I thought I was bringing my kids to show them Sesame Street. But ladies and gentlemen, I realized I landed on Mars. And this is why. Our planet is becoming redder and hotter. In many ways, it is falling apart. We just have to look at images as we saw this afternoon. Icebergs that are breaking down, melting. Sea level that is rising. You know the rest. Elon Musk hopes to get to Mars, but Mars is here, everyone. Getting to Mars and colonizing it is a form of escapism. Why are we so interested in Mars and not each other? So if our Mars is on Earth and it needs addressing right now, we need to think of our future in the longer terms. And the reason why we want to get to Mars is because of the flashes, the smartphones, smartphones are making us dumb. We are stuck in this endless cycle of flashes and dumbstruck like a deer on a highway that just freezes and just the flashes of the headlights. That's how we are. We can't break that cycle. We cannot see the human needs before us because we are drug dependent on Wi-Fi. And Wi-Fi has become more important than water, more important than climate change. How many people do you know who have come to your house to ask you for a cup of water rather than, can I have your Wi-Fi password, please? It has become even more important than the air we breathe. But smart devices are toxic and polluted and built on genocidal blood in the Congo. We have to wake up from this trance-like state. Our young are the world's only hope, and yet so many often are struggling with things such as mental illness. But they must learn to discern the false prophets and the techno-cult leaders that seem to be dominating, like once the old emperor cult was in action in ancient Rome. What has happened to common sense, as has been asked today, 
We need to see through the eyes of children. We need to see through the eyes of children. So you ask me about the future. It is about helping the homeless. It is about helping the disabled who don't need our pity, they need our action. It's about addressing mental health, which is spiraling out of control. It is about better nutrition. It is about climate change and global warming and our response to it. It is about collective awareness, but not collective exploitation. It is not about the datafication of people, getting inside people's brains about inferring what they'll buy next, or getting into people's bodies. It is about humans and not the rights of machines. Our innovations must be about the betterment of humankind and not bettering of machines. We are good at creating better iPhones and coming out with upgrades, but what about using these machines to better humankind? It's a very different argument. It's very easy to go and I'll come out with another incremental change, but what about us? It is about equity, it is about gender equality, it is about income, it is about fairness, it is about access, it is about inclusivity, and it is about grasping risk, because risk will be forever present. In Genesis 11, the people thought they would engineer a great tower and get to heaven that way. Let's just build the wall. Let's just build a big wall. Let's just build a really big tower and walk up the tower and get to heaven, right? Hubris. But I think we haven't learned from the Tower of Babel yet. They believed falsely they could get to heaven in a very, very brute force. They had part of the answer. They were willing to have a go. Good things take effort and are not easy. But how do we enact, cha enact change that is for the longer term? How do we coordinate ourselves better as as communities of interest and communities of practice? How do we build new technologies without the externalities? How do we invest, those, invest in those technologies? How do we bring people on board? How do we solve problems into the longer term without shifting the problem as is done so many times in, in the China landscape? And what is it? It's been mentioned here before today. It is growing in sophistication. It is sharing the new technologies. It is sharing the new processes. It is sharing the new methods sharing the new understanding, sharing the new policies and regulations, soft regulations perhaps and standards that don't discriminate against colour, don't discriminate on education, don't discriminate on your wealth, on who you know and where you've been. So I'll conclude by asking you to ask yourselves, what is your role in our shared vision and how will we together get to that next step and next phase because it has to happen now and how can we raise awareness of these problems and how can you participate in our curriculums we've got incredible curriculums back home in public interest technology in humanitarian engineering in human and social dimensions of technology in applied ethics in responsible innovation the list goes on we're innovating daily literally and bringing on board so many people from different places. So if you like what you've heard today, some options. See Daniel Sarowitz of CISPO and his team here in Washington. Talk to Rebecca Pringle in the back. Her card is on the table. She's just next to the camera. Rebecca will tell you uh, how you can contribute, how we can work together to solve problems. And I'll finish with the School for the Future of Innovation in Society's motto. The future is for everyone, and I don't stress future here, I stress everyone. Thank you.